Do you remember when Comedy Central used to be about comedy? When it used to actually have funny shows? I do. I mean, they still have some stuff now. South Park's still pretty good, but the majority of what's on Comedy Central, to me, seems like complete horseshit now. I could be wrong about this, but it seems to me that it all started with The Daily Show. Once Jon Stewart left, it just turned into this big ideological pile of garbage. And since then, they've kind of followed suit with similar garbage. I made the mistake of watching a new show called Problematic with Moshi Kosher. The show's description says it's discussing the culture of online outrage and unexamined viewpoints in stimulating comedic debate. Well, that sounds pretty good, but the show doesn't really do that at all, so... The first episode was about cultural appropriation. I suggest you don't watch it unless you want to spend 30 minutes feeling like you're about to vomit. The main problem I have with the show is that everyone seems to be completely unaware of the fact that the things they say they want and the way they seem to want to get there are completely out of sync. They're completely opposites. They say that they want to... America to be a place where everyone blends in, a mix of all cultures... But then everything they talk about goes directly against that. And they don't seem to realize it. At one point they have the creator of Blackish on who uses the term white broke. And then they never really explain what it is. They kind of just jokingly move on as if somehow being white and broke is entirely different than being anything else and broke. As if somehow not having money or starving on the street somehow becomes beneficial to be white. I don't see the connection there. If I'm starving on the street, why does it matter what my skin color is? And I don't really like to talk about this, but this isn't exactly hypothetical. I grew up poor. And not white poor. I mean, I guess white poor. I'm white and I was poor. But I grew up homeless for a while. On the streets. Literally living on the streets. As a child. If that's what you call white poor, well, that's pretty fucking bad. They also talk about having a big ass, like, this is just some cool new thing to have a big ass, like, we all can just control the size of our ass. I'm white, and I have a fairly large ass, and not just because I'm fat, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit fat, but even when I was in shape, I had a large ass. So, does that mean I can identify as black now, because I have a black ass? No. Obviously not, because ass size isn't that strongly correlated with race. The size of my ass has nothing to do with what race I am. They also go on to talk about whiteness as being mainstream, but I don't really think that's true. I think there's this sort of American ideal or image that's mainstream, but I don't think that's whiteness that's mainstream. I don't think that makes any fucking sense. The problem I have with this is that if you say that whiteness is the mainstream so everyone's just okay with it and accepting of it and other cultures aren't mainstream so they're com somehow less valuable to everyone or less valuable in society then why wouldn't you want cultural appropriation if everyone borrows your culture then it becomes mainstream and if it becomes mainstream then it becomes entirely acceptable and entirely accepted by everyone so if that's what you want if that's the goal you want then you should want other people to borrow your culture it doesn't make any sense to say that you're marginalized or treated differently because the things you do and the things that are part of your culture aren't accepted and then to get down everyone's throat every time somebody tries to imitate that. The only way for it to become more accepted and become more mainstream is for other people to do it, for other people to imitate that. And that shouldn't be considered a big insult or a slight to you in any way. If somebody wants to dress like you or look like you, you should consider that flattering. I mean, the old saying goes, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. They also go on to say that you should get to know the people, experience their culture, but there's the problem again. How can I do any of that? How can I actually experience someone's culture and immerse myself in their way of thinking and their, I don't know, way of life or whatever, if... I can't actually do the things that they do and experience the things that they experience. If I have to cut myself off from that, how am I ever supposed to understand where they're coming from as people?
At one point, somebody said, you can steal a dance for me if I get health insurance or life insurance or whatever white people get. Well, I'm white, and I don't have life insurance. I have Obamacare. You're free to sign up for Obamacare while it still exists. I mean, I mean, everyone can do that. Because health insurance isn't a white thing or a race thing at all. But I'm sure they knew that. I'm sure they were just joking. It just it goes to show how weak their arguments really are. They don't really make any good arguments. They just kind of say a joke and then move on because they don't have any good points to make. And the thing that really pisses me off is I don't even want to play this stupid fucking race game. It's just so stupid and annoying. And the dumb thing is, if you really want to play it, if you really want to do this and split everything up into race, well, you're going to lose. You're going to lose to a bunch of racist assholes. And the reason you're going to lose is because a lot of shit was invented by white people. So if you want to play that game, you're going to lose to a bunch of racist assholes. Because if you want to talk about only being able to use things that were created or contributed by your culture, well, guess what? The people that invented TV were white. So are you appropriating white culture by being on TV? No, obviously not. It doesn't make any fucking sense. You can be on TV all you want. It doesn't matter if you're white or black or whatever. It has nothing to do with it. I mean, you can't just be on TV. You got to have equipment and a network or whatever. But it has nothing to do with who invented the television. That has nothing to do with who should be allowed to be on TV. The same way that it doesn't matter who invented or started using a certain hairstyle. Who gives a shit if other people want to use that hairstyle? And, of course, they bring up hair. In particular, they bring up dreadlocks, seemingly unaware of the fact that Vikings wore dreadlocks. I mean, they weren't the first to do it, but they did it. So if I wear dreadlocks, am I culturally appropriating from someone else? Or am I just taking from the Vikings? But, of course, they don't just stop there. They make a completely ridiculous comparison. They take some random guy who has dreadlocks, and they're like, oh, look at this poor guy. He's a black guy, so he, he didn't get a job because he had dreadlocks. But then look at Kylie Jenner. She has dreadlocks and she's all praised for it. Well, guess fucking what? Kylie Jenner's famous. This random guy wasn't famous. It's not even a good comparison. I mean, what's to say if Kylie Jenner hadn't applied for the job, she wouldn't have got it either because she had dreadlocks. Or just some other white lady wouldn't have got it because of dreadlocks. You just don't know. And if this guy had a famous family... Maybe he wouldn't be getting shit about having to get a job with, and having dreadlocks. He'd probably just, at that point, or at least possibly, at that point, be rich enough that he wouldn't even have to get a job. So it wouldn't matter. He could just sit around posting on Twitter, whatever the hell Kylie Jenner does, and it wouldn't be an issue. It doesn't even seem like it's a black and white issue in this case. It's literally just about famous versus working class. They also talk about some white lady who's singing like karaoke or something, and she has an Asian accent. And, I mean, I don't know. Who really cares? I mean, what's really the difference between that and, say, like, a half-Asian person who doesn't really have an Asian accent, who pretends to have an Asian accent just for the comedy of it? Like, what's really the difference there? I mean, in the one case, you know, they, they, they are a little bit Asian, but so fucking what? Who gives a shit? Who cares what race people are? Why does that matter all the time? But on top of that, if their purpose is to, like, mock the culture and to be funny. Like, yeah, I guess it's their own culture. But still, they're essentially, you know, making fun of a whole lot of people that aren't themselves. Whereas in the other situation, you know, they're essentially copying them as more of an homage. It's not meant to be funny, necessarily. But if it was, what would be the difference there? The joke is still the same joke, so what's the difference between who's saying it? Why does that really matter? And they go on to talk about Iggy Azalea changing the effect of her voice or something. And again, it's the same thing. Like, who gives a shit? But not only that, I mean, it's her own vocal cords, right? I mean, so that's her body. So isn't it her choice how she sings? Who are you to tell her how to use her vocal cords to reduce noise? I mean, if you don't like it, you can just not listen to it. That's always an option. But then they go on to claim that Iggy Azalea appropriates lyrics from other people. And I mean, I don't know, I, maybe she does, I, I have no idea, but either way, why are they even using the word appropriate? Why not use plagiarize or something else more fitting? It seems that the only reason they're doing it is to play off of the cultural appropriation idea. But that just shows you how stupid the term is. 
and how easy it is for people to just throw it around. And in fact, it is a stupid term. I mean, to appropriate essentially means to steal. Usually you're talking about money, but you know, it doesn't have to be. But essentially you're saying you're taking something you don't own without that person's permission. But when we're talking about culture, who really owns a culture? I mean, if I decide to wear dreadlocks, am I really stealing from somebody else that has dreadlocks? Like, what harm does that do anyone else for me to also use it? So in what way have I stolen anything or taken anything from anyone else? They're even going to go on to explain, like, it's okay as long as you, like, give credit. Like, it, it, the problem isn't that you're borrowing from other people's culture, it's that you're borrowing and not giving back. But this idea is still stupid. In what way would I give back? Who do I owe it to? Somebody just because of the way they look? That seems stupid and racist to me. They say that the problem is when, the, when you don't give back and that you just build off the backs of those that came before you. But that's what we all do all the time. I mean, with like basically any technology, any advancements in society, we're constantly doing these things. Like even now, just the technology I'm using to record this and the technology you're using to listen to this is far more advanced than what we had 50 years ago. So the people back then didn't have those advantages. So essentially we're building off the backs of others. We're building off the backs of those who came before us. But not just those that looked like us, not just those that were part of the same race as we are, but anyone who made advancements to society, anyone who advanced the human race before us, we owe them a great deal of gratitude. But who do I pay back for that? No one. The only thing I can do is I can use everything I can to the best of my ability. I can take full advantage of every opportunity I have. That's the best I can do. And I don't owe it to anyone else now. I owe it to the people of the past. And the only way I can repay them is to do the best I can, to not let those opportunities be squandered, to not let their hard work go for nothing. Like, if I decided to become a scientist and I built off the work of Carl Sagan, why would it be that I don't owe anything to anyone, but if I built off the work of Neil deGrasse Tyson, I would suddenly owe some debt to black people? That doesn't make any sense. Science isn't about race, it's a human endeavor. Science belongs to us all. In much the same way, our own voices, our own styles, these are our own. We should be able to choose them as much as we want. They shouldn't be limited by race. I should have the whole range of human variety available to me to the extent that I physically can. But then the show goes on to show just how batshit crazy and stupid it can be when it has a DJ who says, white people as a whole are the devils of society. And they take and take and take. Well, guess what? White people aren't a monolith. White people aren't just one thing. White people are a bunch of people. The same way all people are a bunch of people. I'm really getting tired of explaining this. Our brains aren't really all that different between races. Our brains are different between people. Individuals have vastly different ways of thinking. But this isn't controlled by our race. He also says that he cares about compliments from black people twice as much as he cares about compliments from white people. He's apparently spent a lot of time thinking about this. You had to do the math. So, I have to wonder though, in the Quran it says women are worth half as much as men. So, I guess if we apply all this, then we can have a nice little table of values. If we apply the Quran logic with this guy's logic, essentially what we have is we have black people are the best, and then you get black women and white men are equal. And then, yeah, half of that value, you have, you have black women. And this isn't me, this is this guy and the Quran. I just, I'm implying their logic. I don't agree with it. I think it's fucking stupid, but I, I just wanted to point that out. They also took some questions from the audience and somebody asked about, what about like mixed race people? Like, do they have to like pick a side or are they allowed to do a little bit of both? And they, nobody really answers the question. They just kind of move on. They set a joke and we're just like, oh, we're done with this conversation. We don't need to actually have conversations. We don't actually need to answer questions. We don't actually need to talk about any of this we're just going to say some stuff have a couple of laughs and then act like we had a constructive dialogue when we didn't i mean i know this show was supposed to be funny but i mean it wasn't funny so it didn't even do that part it basically just failed in every way like i said don't watch it it's, it was a waste of time the audience also had a nigerian lady who pretty much was like when i see people wearing nigerian stuff 
I love it. I love it when you wear my stuff. Do that. Do that some more. And yeah, I don't know. Like that's the way I think about it. What's what's wrong with that? Like I said, if you want something to be mainstream, if you want it to be more accepted, if you want everyone to like it, why would you want everyone to uh, have to stay away from it? Why wouldn't you want them to adopt these cultural practices? If you want them to become mainstream, if you want people to accept them, if you want people to not make fun of you for them or whatever, then you should want them to participate and realize that, you know, they enjoy whatever it is, whatever cultural thing you're talking about. They also talked to a guy who has uh, some restaurant or taco truck or something called white boy tacos it sounds like a stupid name to me i don't give a shit but anyway they use it to talk about dividing us from within <laughs> the stupid thing is that's exactly what they are doing that's exactly what this show is doing it's dividing us from within rather than coming together and agreeing on things and getting along and enjoying the same things enjoying the same music enjoying the same clothes enjoying the same art Instead, we're all just supposed to like be on our toes and be on edge because if I say the wrong thing or I do the wrong kind of art or I use the wrong kind of music or I use the wrong kind of words, then I'm a terrible person. How am I supposed to sit back and enjoy anything when I have to be so on edge, when I have to be so afraid of offending someone just by doing the things that I enjoy? But they have an answer for him. See... Throughout the whole show, they didn't say that you can't do any of these things. You can't borrow from other cultures. It's just that you shouldn't do it. But their answer in this case is just hire Mexican-American workers. That way, you know, you took from the Mexicans by making tacos, but now you're giving back to the Mexicans by hiring their people. Because there's nothing racist about that. There's nothing, nothing at all racist with the idea of hiring people on the basis of their race. Nothing racist about hiring people on the basis of their race. Mexico and Mexican-Americans don't own tacos. Anyone can make tacos. If you buy the materials and you assemble a taco, you own the taco. Nobody owns the concept of tacos. If the concept of tacos was owned, it would be copyrighted and then you wouldn't be able to use it. Like, seriously, rather than hiring people based on merit, you want them to hire them based on their race. And not just that. You think that because he makes tacos, he needs to hire Mexican-Americans. And you don't find anything wrong with that logic. Well, now that Comedy Central has caused me to fall back into the abyss that is depression... Let's get an opinion from someone who's on TV who isn't a complete fucking idiot. Daniel Wu, the star of AMC's Into the Badlands, had an interview with Screen Anarchy, and they were talking about Iron Fist a little bit. The interviewer asked him something about cultural appropriation, and this is what he had to say. Yeah, but you know what? I think that people are going a little too precocious on that, because originally the character was written white. It wasn't like it was a whitewashing thing. It's not like you were talking about a Ghost in a Shell issue, right? And I still don't actually buy the Ghost in a Shell whitewashing issue either. And I certainly don't buy into the cultural appropriation bullshit because that's saying, for Iron Fist, that only Asians are allowed to do martial arts. Then that means only black people can play basketball and rap. That means Jeremy Lin shouldn't be playing basketball and Eminem shouldn't be rapping. That's bullshit, you know? So I know Asian Americans are angry, but they should calm down and choose the correct fight in this case. I agree that Marvel missed the chance to do something interesting and cast against the race. They could have done that, and it would have given them some credit. But they didn't. So what are you going to do about it? I think the important thing is that everyone learned a lesson from that, including people that weren't involved. So I think we just need to move forward, that's all. He goes on to say, What I'm most proud about is that we're not waving the Asian American flag around. We're not going, this is an Asian American show. It's just a cool show that just happens to have an Asian American lead, you know? And I think that's kind of more interesting to me than saying, we're going to make a show that puts Asian Americans out there. I'm not sure I really want to be involved in something like that. Oh no, he doesn't want to group everyone based on race? How unprogressive of him. But no, seriously, if you disagree with me on this, please explain to me how what he said was wrong. Because all I'm saying is the same thing. We need to stop putting everyone in boxes based on race and just make good content. Just do your own thing. Do whatever you do 
and stop worrying about what everyone else is doing. If you like doing a certain type of music, make that music. No one's stopping you. If you like a certain art style, do that. If you like making videos on YouTube, start making videos on YouTube. Do what it is that makes you happy. It doesn't matter what other people are doing. It doesn't matter how cool it is or how popular it is. I mean, to an extent, obviously, if you're making videos on YouTube and you, no one's watching them, then there's a, a bit of a problem there. But you don't need to base your life decisions on what everyone else thinks is cool. So here's the real problem. If we allow ourselves to play this game, if we buy into this identity politics bullshit, then we let the racists win. We allow them to keep forming their arguments. We frame the argument for them in these neat little packages where everyone's based on race. Where everything is based on race. Which doesn't even fucking make sense because race and culture aren't even the same thing. But even so, the only way to break free of this is to realize that people are all individuals. If you have two people, it doesn't matter if they look a lot alike, it doesn't matter if they're part of the same race. That doesn't tell us very much about them. It doesn't tell us how they think. It doesn't tell us how they behave. It doesn't tell us how they perform in pretty much anything. So what good does it do us? I mean, that's not to say that race isn't a thing. That's not to say that there's not some uses for grouping people into race, for studying anthropology and whatnot. But we don't need to use it for every single aspect of life, especially ones where it doesn't fucking apply. If I want to know something about people, about the way they think and the way they act... I need to know more about humanity, not about race. Our brains evolved long ago, and so we as individuals think very much alike on a many, many ways when it comes to the way our brains process information and, and all that kind of stuff. But how we think beyond that is so individual from person to person that it doesn't matter what race you belong to. Two white people or two black people can think entirely vastly different. In fact, if you have two white people and two black people, it's entirely possible that one of the white people and one of the black people agree on pretty much everything, and that the other two agree on pretty much everything, and that the, each group disagrees with the other group. Because race doesn't matter that much when it comes to how we think about things, how we see the world. But our individual differences, our individual experiences matter a lot. They shape mostly everything. When it comes to how we behave and see the world, that is. So I really hope that Comedy Central gets their head out of their asses and stops with all this identity politics, social justice, pandery bullshit and realizes that this isn't doing any good. This isn't getting anyone to get along any better. This isn't creating better relationships between people. And it's not even funny. It's not even comedy. It's just mindless garbage to get attention. And hopefully it fails so that they can actually start making comedy again. So leave a comment and then let me know what you think. You can also rate this video. You can follow me on social media. And if you like my work, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.